Because somewhere in my garden, hidden far, far away, within the inner portion of this paradise, there is a place that exists, which I consider my secret garden. And here, there are so many amazing projects in store. Can you guys guess what I'm about to do? And I do have to tell you, I was so pleasantly surprised to get these gifts right here because they are coming from an old time friend and also a coworker that I worked with in the past for almost 20 years. Now, at the time we did work together, I had no idea that she did like orchids. So to find out later, because we did keep in touch was quite a pleasant surprise and even more pleasant because now I have them. She's actually moving to Puerto Rico and really needed a loving home for her orchids. So she decided to give them to me. Thank you, Luz. If you are watching this, I do appreciate these beautiful, beautiful orchids. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at each one. This particular fowl right here is quite beautiful and is of a good size size as you can see with the leaves. The only issue that I'm seeing with this one is it does have a slight yellowing in the leaves if we take a look and I'm guessing that's either magnesium deficiency or perhaps that this fowl right here had gotten a little bit too much sun but no problems and no worries. I do have a project in mind that I think is going to do this orchid quite lovely. Now top view looking at the roots we are going to notice some wilting and also some shriveling up but if we do look within the inner portion of the actual pots we are going to notice that they do have some nice green roots in there and they are substantial throughout the entire pot. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at our beautiful blooms. Now here's one that is not quite fully opened yet, but oh my, check out that nice color combination. Very lovely. And you're also noticing those spottings and the patterns in there as well. Just so beautiful is this Phalaenopsis and we're going to go ahead and turn her around and see the other fully open bloom. Here she is and isn't she quite lovely. And this Phalaenopsis right here is quite smaller. Let's go ahead and take a look at the actual plant itself. Look at that. Quite an itty bitty right here or a medium sized one, but she's not that big at all. And if we take a closer look at her, we are going to see a little bit of her history and what's gone on with her. And this orchid right here, I actually had to restake up because she was pretty imbalanced. And the reason why, as you can see right there, there's not that much sustainable roots as far as being capable of anchoring this plant down. Now you see these roots right here, they are dyed and withered away. But if we take an even closer look, we will see the reason why. This right here, the remnant of the mother plant that has died away. And in place of that is this little itty bitty. So this is actually the offshoot or a basil cakey. She is still quite young. But yes, she was still mature enough to bloom. These beautiful, beautiful blooms. But that is the reason why she is in her state right now with very, very few roots. But we're gonna go ahead and take care of that. We're gonna use some aloe vera gel water that I like to use with all of my orchids. And I'm pretty sure it's going to go ahead and promote and encourage more growths as well. Or we may even try the terrarium method or this fag and bag method as well to encourage roots. I'm not quite sure, but we will definitely do something with her. Because take a look at those awesome, awesome blooms. Look at all those speckles, the beautiful dark and drastic contrast in color 
with that bright, bright shade of pastel yellowish green and a heavy magenta maroonish spotting in there. Just how gorgeous is she? So we definitely want her to grow and thrive and give us as many beautiful, gorgeous blooms as possible. Now, before I go any further and also before I forget, I definitely wanna show you this little itty bitty teeny weeny right here. Now, this right here was a basil cakey that my friend was trying to rescue and it was originally in a pot, but wasn't doing so good and I didn't wanna wait any longer. I wanted to get her into a terrarium or a rescue container as soon as possible. So that is why she is in one of my grow globes right now. Again, in a terrarium container type. And this is to really promote high humidity, warmth, and also a lot of moisture to encourage more root growth on this little itty bitty cakey. Now, as we take a closer look, we can't really see in there because it is a bit fogged up. So we're gonna go ahead and open up the lid and see what's going on in there. And there she is. Can you see how tiny she is? She is so small. These grow globes aren't big at all and she fits in there quite well, even with a whole lot more space. So yeah, she is teeny weeny and I don't wanna move her about too much, but I don't know, can you see right there? That's her teeny weeny root. She's just really, just a small little gal and she just needs that extra special TLC and that's what we're gonna give her. And speaking of rescue terrariums, these two are exactly that. I have two orchids in here that we were attempting to rescue. This was a single bulb Cattleya, and also this was a Cedria japonica. This Cedria japonica also was not doing so well. It was becoming really shriveled up and it did have cakeys on it as well, which appeared to be really failing badly. So I decided to go ahead and put it into this terrarium. And I do have to tell you, these two projects have been been successful and they've been in here for about six months or even longer believe it or not and I believe it is time to go ahead and remove them we will be removing these two and repotting them as well so stay tuned for that adventure and last but not least is this pretty big gal right here with two spikes as you can see now as I stated she is pretty big look at that She's the biggest one of all. But if we also take a closer look, we're gonna find out something going on with this one as well. So let's take that closer look now. So looking at this from afar, you might be fooled into thinking that this is just but one plant. But as we take a closer look, you will actually see that this is one plant and this is yet another plant. As a matter of fact, this is a keiki that has grown from this plant right here. And if we take a look at the top roots, we are seeing that there isn't that much. And that is an indicator that indeed, this is a newer plant. So as you can see, this is the baby keiki that has come off of the bigger mama plant. So what is going on with mama? Now, I'm not saying that every time you see an offshoot or a keiki that something else can be going on with the mother plant. Just in this case, I believe there is. And just looking at this fowl right here, it just seemed a little bit imbalanced, like something should be happening towards the top. And as you can see, this leaf is just about as big as the bottom leaf underneath. So there should be some form of new growth in the center, but as you see, there is not. And as I took a closer look, I don't know how close I can get in there, but that inner leaf on the inside is completely black and looks as if it's dried out as well. So I don't think there's anything else that's going to be going on in the center of this fowl right here. That crown appears to have perhaps even rotted away in the inner core of it. And that, my friend, is the true reason why Big Mama has decided to throw off this side shoot or this basil cakey in order to sustain its livelihood and to also continue to grow since she is stunted. She will now grow through her offspring. But here's the good news, folks. The actual cakey and also the mother have pretty good roots right there. 
Now, of course, I do have to change this out of the media or get this out altogether because I do have a plan in mind for all of these fowls. But yeah, these roots are sustainable for both plants and I can actually elect to separate them and have this growing off on its own because it's big enough, mature enough and also blooming. And this one right here would also be separated the mama because it does have good roots in the pot. And we can see if we can kind of promote or encourage mama to even throw off more cakeys. Who knows? I mean, that would be a good experiment for this. Let's go ahead and take a look at these beautiful blooms from this gal. So this Phalaenopsis right here has a very, very, very long spike. And these are the older blooms. You are seeing that it is almost a white, very pastel, yellowish, greenish color. Very beautiful, nice sized blooms on this, about three inches in diameter. Just quite a subtle beauty with an amazing amount of potential in the blooms on this spike. Now on her other spike right here, this one is freshly bloomed about a day or two ago and you are seeing more of a darker color. It is still very light but you're still noticing a darker greenish yellow in that bloom in comparison to this bloom right here. So that is the color it will have for a while. And as it gets older, it lightens up a bit. But let's go ahead and take a closer look at this very, very long spike right here and find out its history. So this right here is the original spike. And as you see, somewhere down the line, it did die out and it was clipped off. Well, because it was cut, this lower node decided to throw off another spike, an alternative one. And as we go down further, you will see that it did decide to even split and create two spikes or another alternative spike branching off. So that is why you're getting this very long, heavy spike right here. And indeed, you can imagine how many blooms this spike has already created. And perhaps even how many more blooms this could make. Because look at there. If we take an even closer look, you are seeing there is yet another alternative spike in the making. And this may be perhaps because this mama right here has the unction that she may not survive. So she's trying to create as many blooms as possible in hopes of sustaining her livelihood also through her blooms and eventually via seeds. So indeed, again, she is trying to survive through her offsprings. So as you guys can see, there is a whole lot more than meets the eye when it comes to these beautiful Phalaenopsis right here. And you guys know, I don't do so many Phalaenopsis videos, not because I don't like them, but because they don't do so well for me in my outdoor growing environment. So yes, I admire and appreciate Phalaenopsis orchids via through other people's collections. But as for me, I don't really take on Phalaenopsis projects. But because of my friend, I have to tell you, giving me these orchids right here has really inspired me to try something new. And in this case, we are gonna have some rescues, we're gonna have some propagations, and indeed, we are going to even try a new growing method with these Phalaenopsis. So there is going to be so many more videos of some fowls. Yay! Because we indeed are going to be learning so much with my new Phalaenopsis adventures. And Luz, I have to thank you so much because you gave me these wonderful, beautiful Phalaenopsis orchids. I have to tell you, I've already fallen in love with them. And because of this, I have been truly inspired to do so many projects in the future. And yes, indeed, with Phalaenopsis orchids. So you guys stay tuned for more. I truly do appreciate 
you guys for tuning in and I hope you did like this video. If you did, please be sure to like, share and also subscribe. Also be sure to turn on that notification button so you guys will know exactly when I do post a new video. And of course, please be sure to join me on my Instagram and also my Facebook under My Orchid Adventures. And as you guys already do know, I truly do love and appreciate each and every one of you guys all and I will see you guys later and I'll also grow with you guys later as well. Bye bye for now. Mwah.